Today's gonna be a really fun phone video for me because I'm considering switching to this phone, but we have to find out how good it is. In front of me today, I have the Xperia 5 IV. The naming convention is confusing at best. We have the Xperia Pro I, which we've done a video on, the most recent Xperia 1 IV, which is coming out soon, actually shipping along around the same time as this phone in September. And then now the Xperia 5 IV. Sony, please change this naming scheme, it's not great. But the phone is potentially great. Uh, in the box, we have just the phone and some very eco-friendly packaging. This is paper, there is no charger or cable. So they're taking the Apple route. Now, here's the phone. You might think this looks pretty similar to the One 4, and it does. That is a very good thing. There are a couple key differences. So on the back here, we have this like soft touch metal finish, which I actually love on Sony phones. It doesn't really attract fingerprints that much. It will, if you're no, if you got like super sweaty hands or whatever and you're holding your phone, but like it really is a, one of the best finishes on a phone in my opinion, because I hate, you know, like I have a one plus eight, which is pretty old at this point, but look at this thing. It is a mirror. On the rest of the back are three cameras, are 16 mil, 24 mil and 60 mil. Now, if you watch the one four video or you know anything about that other predecessor phone, we're actually missing the telephoto 85 to 120 mil lens that they had was actually an optical zoom, really cool technology. There's also no time of flight sensor, but again, this is the more affordable version of a similar phone. On the right of the phone, we have a power button, shutter button, which actually this time around isn't knurled or marked or textured in any way. It's still there, which is nice. So when you turn the phone on, yeah, you long press for your camera app and it's just open. And then you have a shutter button in relatively the same position as a camera when you hold it like this. I think the fingerprint sensor is built into the power button and then we have a volume rocker on the right. And then on the left of the phone, we have nothing, which is not a bad thing. I actually don't mind everything being on one side. This phone, and this is probably one of my favorite things of Xperia phones has a headphone jack. It's 2022, most smartphones don't have headphone jacks. You might not care. On top of using headphones, you can actually use a mic. What? You have a mic input. And that is very important because high quality audio, especially if you're shooting on just your phone, very necessary. On the front, we have a 2520 by 1080p full HD display. It is OLED, which is very nice, and 120 hertz. The 120 hertz is actually off by default, which I assume is just a battery saving measure, but I'm gonna turn it on so that we get the full experience. Speakers are front firing, and they've actually apparently changed the housing on the speakers so that there's less vibration in the phone, which in theory should make them sound better. On top of that, we have a new 12 megapixel selfie camera on this phone over its predecessor, the 5.3. This is also one of the first phones along with the One 4. They teased this in the One 4, but this is the first time I'll try this in person. They have this Music Pro app, which is just supposed to be able to allow you to do voice recording. It's an app that you can literally record an instrument on if you really wanted to. And then actually you can send it off to Sony to their servers and it will remove background noise for you. You can also edit it on the phone, which is kind of cool. Okay, this phone is also IP68 slash 65, so you can drop it in a puddle and not cry. And on the bottom of the phone, we have your typical Type-C and a toolless SIM and micro SD expansion. Thank you, Sony, for still doing this because again, a lot of phones you get these days do not have micro SD expansion. Obviously, it's going to be slower than the memory built into the phone, which is, I think this model is 128 gigs. Final couple specs on this phone, it has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and it also has eight gigs of RAM built in. The other new feature on this phone is actually has wireless and reverse wireless charging, which I'd love to see, because I haven't personally used a wireless charging phone. And on top of wireless charging, this phone, just like the One 4, has 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is pretty respectable. Before we get to the cameras, I'm gonna tell you about today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. 
Thanks to Epidemic Sound for sponsoring today's video. Epidemic Sound provides high quality, professionally produced music and sound effects for you to use. Whether you're a video creator on YouTube or need it for work at an agency, Epidemic Sound has a license to cover it through their personal and commercial plans. Choose from tens of thousands of diverse and original sound effects and tracks. Epidemic's ear feature lets you also select specific portions of any track to search for music in their catalog that sounds similar to the sound you're looking for. So sign up today in the link in the video description for a free 30 day trial. Thank you, Epidemic Sound. Okay, cameras. So I have heard that this thing will overheat at certain resolutions for long periods of time. And as this warning is telling me, the Videography Pro app is just kind of a slightly nicer UI to toggle things like your zoom, you got your manual autofocus. It's laid out very similarly to an alpha camera. Um, ISO is right here. Like I really like this UI. Photo Pro, similar. You got a couple modes. The basic is pretty much like your standard smartphone camera app. The 16 millimeter and the 24 millimeter cameras on this phone are the same as the one four. The main difference is the 60 mil because this is a fixed 60 mil versus the 85 to 120 mil. You get your Venice color, different LUTs, warm, cold, strong, all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. Similar layout to the uh, Video Pro app, but with a couple extra things like the codec is here in display. You have audio levels. It's a little bit more professional. It's got shutter angle, that kind of thing. Frame rate is here. Oh, also each camera on this phone, just like the one four has 120 FPS 4K shooting, which is very nice. This is what the selfie camera looks like. This is also what the mic sounds like. So uh, I'm gonna just keep talking and it, what you, you guys can tell me in the comments what you think of the mic. I'll listen to this later on the laptop, but selfie camera in HDR and this is what the mic sounds like. Let's test how this looks. So it's assuming I'm in a backlit portrait. This is kind of optimal lighting, but Honestly, my impression of this on the phone display anyway, is it looks a little bit on the bright side, the way that the camera thought to meter the shot. Also, let me just check if there's any skin softening. Oh, please, Sony, I understand, but please don't have the soft skin effect on by default. Let's do that again without the skin softening feature. Well, you can see texture in my skin versus less if you looked at the other photo. There is eye autofocus on every single one of these cameras, which is, again, an excellent thing. Looking at it, I really like the display. It feels snappy, as I would expect a 120 hertz display. And I actually agree with this resolution more than the 4K OLED that was in the 1.4 because the pixel density, you're not really gonna notice 4K versus 1080p on a display this small. And if you are the one person who does, well, good for you. Why don't we actually try listening to the speakers? Oh, that's so weird. So there's this feature when I press the volume rocker of dynamic YouTube vibration. And so it's like vibrating the phone along with the song. I mean, on its own, without comparing it side by side to another device, this sounds pretty good to me. Most phones these days have much tinnier mids and aren't really great on the low end. I mean, again, this is just a phone speaker that is front firing, which is nice. The last thing I wanna test is going over some of the photos we actually shot on the weekend because I have been using this phone for about three days and we're gonna do some tests live. So we're gonna go outside with Adam and take a couple photos and video. First thing I wanna test is the 60 mil lens on this phone because it is different than the other two cameras which are the same as the one on the one four. This will also test the image stabilization and how good it is as we walk backwards. So Adam's here. We're gonna just walk around here in a circle and then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna follow him the entire, or he's gonna follow me. Oh, I missed those instructions. I'm walking in. Thanks a lot, and one, two. So the main thing I wanna test here is mainly the 60 mil, just because we've seen the performance of the 16 and the 24 mil. Both of them are good, but I'll, I will do a couple of shots with both as well. Nice. The last test I wanna do is how the selfie camera handles a backlit situation. So one thing I don't like about the Video Pro app, in this instance, I'm using the selfie camera, but the UI, is still 
in the horizontal setting. So this is what the selfie camera looks like in 4K backlit situation. It's also shooting in HDR. So it does seem like I can't do any manual control in the selfie camera, at least not in the Video Pro app, which is a bit unfortunate because I really like a lot of things about this app. I should just be able to go into this and change the settings. The last thing I wanna test, we have some background noise right now. There's a train that way. There's some people doing garden work that way. I'm gonna record a voiceover on this phone and then we'll send it off to Sony and see how this process is. Okay, we're back inside. Um, I actually took this phone on a weekend trip to Seattle. So we're gonna take a look at some of the photos from that trip also we're gonna look at some of the photos we just took of Adam outside, as well as the video. Now, one interesting thing I'll note before I even get through any of this really, is the DNGs on this phone don't actually perform amazingly. So this is one of the JPEGs on the 60 mil that I got. Camera performance, pretty good. Sharpness is decent in comparison to the raw DNG of the same photo. Yeah, so you'll see in the DNG quite a bit noisier you can obviously edit this. So I can take down the exposure. I can take down the highlights. Um, I don't believe it's clipping as badly. The autofocus on this phone is excellent. This photo of these birds, I was just walking down the sidewalk, not really slowing down to take this photo. I snapped it really quick as these birds flew by and bam. There's this, there was this giant Norwegian cruise ship I was really pushing the ultra wide to see if I could fit the entire thing in. This ship is massive. Like if you can see this tiny little boat here and then you look at this thing, it's like the size of a building. I believe this is on the telephoto and you can actually like see individual people. Obviously we can't see their faces, but you can make out people and that's pretty awesome. Here's another wide shot from a different perspective. Again, a little bit earlier in the day so you can see the sun's kind of on the right. It's shining this way. Dynamic range held everything really well. We even have the shadows in this tree on the left. Perfectly balanced. I just, I like using this phone as a camera. I think I was never really unhappy with the performance of this phone, especially in a daylight setting when you're outside. If you're using it in that situation a lot of the time, then it does pretty well. Here's a couple photos of my son on the inside of our hotel room. Now, the struggle here was I believe he was moving a lot. And even the autofocus could not always keep up with him at a close distance. Though it did nail a couple, like here's one that was in focus and perfectly fine. Still a one over 100. Here's the selfie that I took just earlier. It actually doesn't look overexposed at all on the computer. It's on the higher end. Here's the photo of Bell and Mark. And it's a little bit on the noisy side because it's ISO 800, but if you actually punch in, Bella's is perfectly in focus and he was a tiny head in this photo, but the focus nailed him even though he's in the darker part of the image. The HDR video of the selfie camera, again also didn't turn out as dark as it looked on the phone because obviously the full sun was on that display so it was kind of hard to tell. There is a little bit of what feels like shadow clipping um, because it's really trying to balance both the sky and me, but it is completely usable. So this new selfie camera is solid. So here's the telephoto video. The stabilization, guys, excellent. And it managed to keep Adam, like it looks like I'm not just walking. Like it looks like it's almost on a gimbal or something. Auto exposure is doing a pretty good job here. It's not the highest quality video, not the sharpest I've seen. I feel like the telephoto in the 1.4 was quite a bit better, but obviously that's what you're paying for. Also, let's have a listen to the Music Pro voiceover, both the unedited processed voiceover and here is the Sony edited processed voiceover. Okay, so this is a test of the Sony Xperia 5 4's mic using the Music Pro app to record a voiceover. I've got some background noise from a person doing some yard work behind Mark and then behind me there's going to be a train. I think I actually hear a plane so there's a lot of background noise here to deal with. All right, it's been a couple of days because I actually had a couple issues setting up the account for the Music Pro app but you guys just heard both the original and the processed VO and I just listened to it myself. 
I mean, I didn't know what I was expecting, but I think Sony did what they set out to where they made the voice in the voiceover sound a little bit more separated from the background noise. The yard worker, you could hear a little bit less, but things like wind noise, and you can kind of hear a little bit of compression throughout the recording. So obviously still not an ideal place or setting to record a voiceover. And that's to be expected. If you start with a bad recording, no level of post-processing is really gonna fix those problems, especially not one that's AI based. To be fair to Sony though, I do wanna actually do one more recording right here, right now to see what it sounds like kind of in a studio environment, more like maybe this is similar to your, a hotel room if you were to record your voiceover, which is probably more likely what people will do if they're even going to use this feature. So this is a test of the Xperia 5.4's mic indoors. Select the settings that you want. I'm gonna just denoise. Let's see what D-Reverb does. Do some mic simulation and studio simulation. Let's do all of them. So here's the original. So this is a test of the Xperia 5.4's mic indoors in a studio setting. So this is a test of the Xperia 5.4's mic indoors in a studio setting. Second time around, I'm actually pretty impressed. I think Sony did exactly what they set out to with this AI-based program. The tuned version of this VO does sound a decent amount better and it kind of eliminates that echoiness of this being such a large room. It's not perfect, but I'd say to my ears, it's pretty good. This phone checks so many boxes, especially in terms of the specs, expandable storage, all that kind of stuff, headphone jack. It is definitely squarely aimed at creators, so I am probably fitting within the niche of a phone like this, but I really like what Sony's been doing with their Xperia line. And I do really hope that they're successful because there are very few other smartphone makers really kind of packing all of these features into one device. So yes, 999 US is expensive. And this is not a review, it is only a first impressions, but this phone is awesome. Could it be better? Yes, but I think they're going in the right direction. So I hope for Sony's success on this one. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see more on the Xperia lineup, maybe you can watch the 1.4 video if you haven't. It's a slightly bulkier, better version of this phone, but also more expensive. And I uh, hope you have a great day. Take care. I'm looking at Andy. He is wanting me to wrap this up.